Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast coming from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Wednesday, September 3rd, 2008. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. In London, it's 4.30 p.m. In Hamilton, Bermuda, it's 12.30 p.m. In New Mexico City, it's 9.30 a.m. If you need to contact us during the broadcast, feel free to phone in toll-free in the U.S. at 1-866-67-CADEX. If you're overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEXTV. And we have two breaking stories. The first breaking story is some United States economic news. Uh, the Commerce Department indicated that the uh, U.S. July factory orders have risen 1.3 percent. Uh, economists had been expecting an increase uh, of only 1 percent, so that's overall good news. The uh, stock market is not yet responding. It's down about 28 points. In other news, this just came out from California, actually, from the state California Public Utilities Commission. Um, apparently, according to the commission, improperly maintained utility lines were to blame for three wildfires that swept through San Diego County last fall, killing two people and destroying 1,400 homes. The California Public Utilities Commission said that the October fires started because San Diego Gas and Electric and Cox Communications violated state regulations regarding the maintenance of power lines. Two of the fires began when utility wires touched in strong winds, according to the commission. A third began when a tree limb fell onto one of the utility's power lines. According to the San Diego City Attorney, Michael Aguirre, uh, he said he plans now to add Cox Communications to the city's lawsuit to recover $40 million in firefighting costs and damage to city property, which has initially been fired against San Diego Gas and Electric. The utility is also fighting lawsuits from over 300 fire victims. So uh, that's not good news if you have the liability cover for either of them. Now to our main news. Uh, it's mainly Hurricane Gustav is winding down. It's now essentially a uh, discontinued event according to the National Hurricane Center. It's simply a low pressure system in the south central United States. It's now mainly a rain event. It seems that the consensus of insured losses coming from the various modeling companies is in between three to seven billion dollars. So it's a collective sigh of relief. What is not a sigh of relief is what's lurking behind it. We'll start with Tropical Storm Hannah. That continues to hover off the northern coast of Haiti early today with 60 mile per hour winds. It's still, as you see from the storm path, expected to turn toward the U.S. with a projected landfall in South Carolina late Friday or early Saturday. The Hurricane Center expects that by the time it hits the mainland U.S., it will be at hurricane strength. Right behind Hannah is Tropical Storm Ike. That's continuing to move west-northwest across the open Atlantic. It's expected to reach hurricane strength later today. As of 5 a.m. this morning, Ike was about 835 miles east-northeast of the Leeward Islands with 65-mile-per-hour winds, and it's moving at about 18 miles per hour. And right behind Ike is Tropical Storm Josephine. That's gained slightly a little bit as it moves west-northwest in the open Atlantic. It's right now about 220 miles west-southwest of the southernmost tip of the Cape Verde Islands, it has sustained winds of about 60 miles per hour, and it's moving at 13 miles per hour. That uh, is expected to strengthen somewhat in the next 24 hours. The oracles at Oldwick have come in with some uh, opining. They say that insured losses from Gustav are not expected to be market changing, but they and any further storm losses could stem further rate reductions in 09. This is according to AM Best. Losses for Gustav, estimated by CAT modeling agencies, as we indicated, stood between 2 to $10 billion. They are considerable notes best, but the impact on reinsurance rates is probably not going to be significant. However, Best said that the 08 hurricane season is demonstrating the considerable risk that was originally projected for the season. Best said that developing storms such as Hannah, Ike, and Josephine do provide concerns that a CAT 3 storm may yet make landfall in the U.S. According to Best, an increase in the number of smaller hurricanes and making landfall, combined with an already high level of cat losses in the first half of 08, would likely bring a dose of reality to the competitive property cat markets and stem further declines in pricing in 09. Best said that reinsurers are likely to now recognize that the potential for loss cannot be ignored 
and the competitive confidence of some underwriters will wane. That's from Best, not from me. Speaking of the busy storm season, uh, they're at it again out of Colorado. Bill Gray, according to Colorado State University, they're saying that September will be a busy month for tropical cyclone activity. And if we pull that map up, you can see here are the aforementioned name storms. You see the low of Gustav over the south central U.S., now mainly a rain event. Uh, Hannah hovering around uh, the uh, western part of Hispaniola over Haiti. Further to the east, you see Ike, and further out, you see Josephine. According to Mr. Gray and his associates, they are now predicting that four of the five storms will become hurricanes, with two of them becoming major hurricanes. They say that there will be a five named storms predicted for this month, and they estimate that uh, the forecast for September activity will be at about 190 percent of a typical September activity month. A combination of two factors, the fact that the lowest pressure readings on record in the tropical Atlantic during August, as well as very warm water temperatures in the tropical Atlantic, indicate that September will be quite active based on climate signals. This is according to Bill Gray, who's been issuing these reports from Colorado State for the past 25 years. The Washington-based Reinsurance Association of America, an organization led by Franklin Nutter, have come out with some information. They say that premiums, premiums were up, but profitability is down for U.S. reinsurers in the first half of 08. These are according to the latest consolidated underwriting results released from the RAA. Through 30 June, the RAA indicates policyholder surplus of $72.8 billion for a group of 20 U.S. P&C reinsurers is down almost 6% compared to $77.3 billion for the same period last year. That same group wrote $12.7 billion of net premium, up 4% compared to $12.2 billion written a year ago. However, through 30 June, the combined ratio for the group was 97.5. This is a deterioration of 7.5 points from the 90% combined ratio for the same period in 07. If you want more information on this report, it's available at the RAA website. A uh, earthquake off the Solomon Islands occurred uh, this morning at 11.06 p.m. Solomon Island time. That would be uh, 12.16 uh, universal time. It was uh, a 5.2 event. It was about 115 miles southeast of Guadalcanal, or about 1,290 miles north northeast of Brisbane, Australia. There's no indication of any tsunami report. Uh, we encountered that earthquake when we went to look for this earthquake. This was a 5.1 in southeastern Turkey. There were no reports of any injuries. This quake struck at 5.22 a.m. local time this morning. It apparently uh, uh, was detected by the Kandili Observatory in Istanbul. The epicenter was near the town of Samat in Adiyaman province. Now, as I mentioned, the stock market's down a little bit, about 27 points. We'll go to a word from our sponsors. From prehistoric time to today, man's progress has been marked by his ability to fashion tools and use them to his advantage. From early humans making tools from stone, man evolved and was soon trading with other men. Money evolved, and tools such as the abacus to handle complex money transactions were developed. By the end of the 19th century, machines such as the cash register began to appear. A hundred years later, we have even better computer-driven machines which track stock, change prices, and automatically reorder. Meanwhile, the reinsurance industry has failed to embrace man's drive for progress. The reinsurance industry today would be as familiar to practitioners from the 1800s as it is to modern underwriters. An underwriter or broker from 1800 would settle nicely into today's business. That is, until now. For the reinsurance industry, Pivot Point changes everything. Soon it will be understood that the period before Pivot Point was as dark as the caveman period was before the abacus. Come and see for yourself if you don't. After a demonstration, you will understand what is possible.